I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on linear systems. In this video, we will understand how to find the conditions for a linear system to have infinitely many solutions, right? Once we understand the concept, we are going to solve a test question. So, as far as the basic cons concepts are concerned, let's say we have a coordinate plane with a linear system having infinitely many solutions. It means what? It basically means that the lines will be overlapping, right? So, if this is one of our line representing one of the equations, then infinite many solutions means that the other line should be overlapping. That is the condition, right? So we have two lines here. This is the second line and that's the first line. So if they are overlapping, then we have infinitely many solutions. Now for that, the basic condition is that the slopes should be same, right? And the second is same y-intercept. So these are the two conditions which should be met. Then we can say that the two lines are overlapping and the system formed by these will have infinitely many solutions, right? So as you can see here, the if the equation of the first line is y equals to m1x plus b and the equation of the second line is y equals to m2x plus b then the slope m1 should be equal to m2 right that means they are parallel now only one condition is not sufficient the y-intercept has to be same right same y-intercept is important Otherwise, we will have parallel lines, right? That means no solution, right? So, so we have parallel lines if B1 is not equal to B2, right? But if they are same, as we have seen, we have infinite solution. So I hope that concept is now clear. So we'll actually see what does it mean when we write two equations of the form Ax plus By equals to M and Cx plus Dy equals to N. Once we understand the condition, then we'll solve this test question, which says, apply your result to find the value of P and Q if the following system of equation has infinite solutions. 4x plus 5y equals to 2, and 2p plus 7qx plus p plus 8qy equals to 2q minus p plus 1. You can actually pause the video and answer this question. Now let's see what is the basic condition. So here we are given two equations. One is Ax plus By equals to M. The other one is Cx plus Dy equals to M. Now if I uh, rewrite these equations in the form of slope and intercept, isolating y, we can say by equals to minus ax plus m or y equals to minus a over bx plus m. And for the other equation, we can isolate y and write dy equals to minus cx plus n or y equals to minus c over d x plus n over y. Okay. Now the conditions which we saw were same slope, right? So same slope means what? So that is the first condition. So for same slope, the slope for these are minus a over b and for this equation is minus c over d, right? So basically we get a over b equals to c over d, right? So that is the first condition. The second one is same y-intercept. Now that means that 
these are the y intercepts right well i should have divide this by b also right so that means this constant which was which we took as m right uh, m over b should be equal to n over y this makes sense to you right so that becomes the condition right so basically we are comparing the coefficients of x and they should be equal to coefficients of y and that should be equal to m over n right so that becomes the the condition for us right so all the three conditions should be satisfied so these are exactly same equations does it make sense to you right so that is how we are going to uh, figure out whether the conditions are met or not right now we have our test question we need to find the values of p and q if the system of equation has infinite solution the system includes these two equations 4x plus 5y equals to 2 and 2p plus 7qx plus p plus 8qy equals to 2q minus p plus q plus 1 so now we need to compare the ratios of the coefficients of x and y they should be same so we could write this as 4 over this which is 2p plus 7q should be equal to 5 over the coefficient of y which is p plus 8q right so that is one condition the second condition is that 2 over 5 should be equal to all this which is a constant in this case 2q minus p plus 1 over the coefficient of y which is p plus 8q is that clear to you so we get two equations and we have two variables p and q which we can solve for is that clear to you so that is kind of interesting so let's cross multiply and then solve so we get four times p plus 8q equals to 5 times 2p plus 7q open the bracket 4p plus 32q equals to 10p plus 7 7 and 5 35q okay so uh, now from here we can rearrange and bringing them together we can say that uh, since these are bigger numbers, so we'll say 0 equals to taking this 6p plus 3q. So we get one of our equations. Let's call this as equation 1. Now here, let's cross multiply. So we get 2 times p plus 8q equals to 5 times 2q minus p plus 1, 2p plus 16q equals to 10q minus 5p plus 5. Now, taking them p's and q's on the left side, we get 2 plus 5 is 7p, right? 16 minus 10 gives us 6q equals to the number 5. So, this is our equation number 2. Now, from these two equations, we need to find P and Q. So, what can we do? Uh, well, we can multiply the first equation by 2. Right. So, if I multiply the whole equation by 2, I get 0 equals to 12P plus 6Q. Let's call this as equation number 3. Now, 6Q and 6Q are same coefficients. So now what we could do is we can do equation 2, equation 3 minus equation 2. So we can do this operation. So if I take away from equation 3, equation 2, 12p minus 7p is 5p and 6q, 6q cancel. 0 minus 5 is minus 5. So we get p as equals to minus 5 over 5, which is equal to 1. 
Now, if P is 1, I could substitute this value of P and find the value of Q, right? So, let's do it. So, so we'll do it here. So, what we get as P equals to 1, we are going to substitute it in, let's say, 3, 2. Okay, let's substitute in 2. So, P is 1. So, 7 times 1 plus 6Q equals to 5. So, we get 6Q equals to 5 minus 7, which is minus 2. Or uh, Q equals to minus 2 over 6, which is minus 1 over 3. So, we get the value of Q as minus 1 over 3. And P is 1. So, we get our answer, which is... For infinite solutions, P should be equal to, I'm sorry, this was minus uh, 1, sorry. Since this is minus 1, that will be minus 1. So it goes that side will be plus 1, that becomes 12. And 12 divided by 6 is 2, sorry. Okay, let's do the correction. Okay, good. See, minus 5 divided by 5 is minus 1, right? So we have to substitute minus 1 here. So, substituting minus 1 gives you minus 7, taking it to the other side, it becomes plus 7, right? So, so Q equals to 12 divided by 6, which is 2. So, we get P equals to minus 1 and Q equals to 2, right? So, that is how we are going to solve this particular question, right? So, take care of this. Uh, I did this mistake and fortunately, we got it right just at the last minute, right? I hope this helps. Basically, you understand this strategy that if we have a system of equations, then the ratios of the coefficients of x and y should be equal for both the equations and their y-intercept should be equal, correct? That's the whole idea. Uh, that should give you the solution. I hope that works. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that would be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.